Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a fantasy horror film, Goggle Part 1, The Beginning. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with Goggle, a young judicial clerk gifted with supernatural power. Goggle needs to write a report about a woman who is murdered, but he cannot focus because he's terrified of corpses and blood. After a while, a well-known detective arrives to help them with the case. Suddenly, Goggle suffers from seizures and visions of how the woman was killed, then he unconsciously writes words on the paper. As the detective and his fellow investigator exchange views, Goggle interrupts them, saying that the victim knows the killer. The detective is confused by what Goggle said, so he asks for the crumpled paper, where he wrote the words, Volcano, Cross, and Lamb. The detective analyzes the clues and finds out the word Volcano is the name of the woman's horse, so they summon her coachman, who is also her servant. The servant says that he's a Christian, so the detective asks for his cross. However, he's hesitant to give it. The detective grabs it from him, then shows Gogol the cross-shaped scratch mark on the woman's palm. The detective then concludes that while the servant was strangling the woman, she grabbed his cross necklace, which left a mark on her palm. He also concludes that he secretly likes the woman and calls her Lamb. Then the servant cries endlessly like a baby. He admits that he's madly in love with the woman, so he wasn't able to control himself when he found out that she'll marry someone for money instead of his hormones. Finally, the detective congratulates everyone as he declares that the case is closed. It turns out, Gogol has a supernatural power, wherein during his seizure, he sees visions that could help solve a crime. Before heading home, Gogol and his servant go to a shop to buy all the copies of his books. Then they burn them at home. Gogol is a frustrated writer. He's offended by the critics' criticism of his first book, so he ends up buying and burning them. The next morning, the detective visits Gogol to praise him for doing a great job in their last case, and to inform him that he'll go to investigate the mysterious murders of some women in a province. Gogol expresses his desire to accompany the detective, thinking that he might be of help since he's from that province. Without hesitation, the detective invites him. On their way, Gogol sees a very beautiful woman riding a Ferrari horse that disappears in the woods. Soon they arrive at their destination, where they are warmly welcomed by local officials. The chief of police even offers them a place to stay, but the detective declines because he prefers to stay in a hotel. The detective gets furious later, because the local officials didn't follow the order to keep the dead body in an ice cellar, so he commands them to dig it up immediately for investigation. Later on, a woman guides them to the hotel where they will stay. Afterward, they study the record of the cases and conclude that the horseman is the killer because he's always seen at the crime scene. Thereafter, the detective starts to examine the victim's body. It seems like her heart was severed by a doctor or a butcher because it was perfectly done. Goggle feels uncomfortable, so he goes out to breathe some fresh air. Unfortunately, he loses consciousness when a Ferrari carriage hits him. He dreams that the detective is removing his organs while he's in a coffin. Moments later, the beautiful woman he saw in the woods earlier appears again. He then regains consciousness and sees the beautiful woman named Lisa, who's living in a mansion with her rich husband. She's the woman that Gogol saw in the woods and also the owner of the carriage that accidentally hit him. That night, Gogol eats with Lisa and her husband. After a short while, Lisa suffers from unknown pain, so her husband puts a small bottle on the table. Lisa takes it and then leaves. Gogol worries about Lisa, but her husband assures him that everything is fine, and Lisa just forgot to drink her medicines. It's getting late, so Gogol bids goodbye. As a courtesy, Lisa's husband gives him a Ferrari horse to ride back to the horse motel. In the woods, because of the horseman's presence, the horse runs uncontrollably, causing Gogol to hit the windmill blade, then fall to the ground. After a while, a woman named Oksana, the miller's daughter, arrives. She sees that Gogol is terrified. So to calm him, she offers him to drink some milk tea at home. While drinking tea, Gogol warns Oksana to be careful, because the horseman has already killed three women. But he suddenly loses consciousness, as Oksana mentions that the horseman has not just killed three women, but many. It's revealed that Oksana puts sedatives in his tea to put him to sleep. The next morning, Gogol wakes up with mud on his feet, wondering how he's able to go back to the hotel. He immediately tells the detective about last night's incident, so the detective asks the woman in the hotel if there's a windmill near the area, but she hesitantly answers that it was gone a long time ago. The woman looks uneasy, as if she's hiding something from them. Instantly, Goggle, the detective, and local officials go to the windmill. Goggle is confused because the windmill working just fine last night is now broken. However, he sees his lost coat on the ground, which intensifies his belief that it wasn't a dream. Afterward, one of the officials reveals that 30 years ago, a drowned, good-looking woman was found dead in the river near the windmill. 
He also adds that during that time, lots of women were murdered as well. The detective is very disappointed because they didn't tell him that the same pattern of killings had already happened 30 years ago. While the detective and Goggle are talking, Lisa arrives on a horse. She's extremely worried about Goggle because the horse he used that night has returned full of thorns and scratch marks. After a while, Goggle is overjoyed to know that Lisa loves his books. She even encourages him to continue his passion for writing. It's visible in Goggle's eyes that he's falling for Lisa, but he's trying to hide it because she's already married. That night, Goggle dreams of Oksana, telling him that she'll help him find the horseman, but she also needs his help. Goggle suddenly wakes up, without knowing what kind of help Oksana needs. In the morning, Goggle and the detective go to the abandoned windmill and find a hand on the ground. Later on, it's revealed that it belongs to the woman in the hotel. They try to confront her, but she strangles Goggle, trying to kill him. When the detective tries to stop her, she throws him into the barn. Luckily, the chief of police shoots the woman directly in the face before she kills Goggle. When they search the woman's house, it's uncovered that she's a witch. They also conclude that she's the horseman, because the murder weapon and the horseman sign are found in her house. The chief of police invites Goggle and the detective to celebrate, but they refuse because they need to go home, thinking that the case is already resolved. That evening, Goggle is surprised when Lisa visits him and shares an intimate hormone night with him. In a spur of a moment, he wakes up and realizes that everything's just a dream, but seems so real. He then goes out, only to see the detective and the horseman are fighting inside the burning barn. He tries to help him, but it's too late because the barn has already collapsed. Everyone believes that the detective and the horseman died in the fire. However, Goggle believes that the horseman is still alive because his remains aren't found and the witch is just his accomplice in leading them astray. Because of that, Goggle decides to stay and continue the investigation. Later that night, the horseman comes to the house where the witch's body lies and then resurrects her. The witch apologizes because she wasn't able to inform him of Goggle's supernatural power. Unfortunately, the horseman doesn't listen to her, but covers her face with his hand as the witch screams to death. A few days later, another murder takes place. A greasy woman nicknamed Ms. Greasy died suddenly, and her lover witnessed it. According to the lover, they found a red jacket outside the house. Then suddenly, the candle was burned with a green flame and blood came out of it. Later on, the red jacket seemed to come to life, then a bloody pig's head appeared in the window. In great fear, he ran away in four limbs, but he hit the wall, causing him to lose consciousness. When he woke up, he was shocked to find that the woman had been stabbed to death. According to old folklore, the devil throws a red jacket on the doorstep, which symbolizes conjugal infidelity. Ms. Greasy is actually having a greasy hormone affair with her lover because she's already married. Early in the morning, Goggle wakes up with scratches on his back. He's confused because he remembers making love with Lisa, then it becomes Oksana. Soon after, he finds out Ms. Greasy's lover is imprisoned because the police conclude that the lover is the killer, since he was with the victim when she was found dead. They also think that he's the horseman, since the horseman's sign is found on the crime scene. However, Goggle isn't convinced, so he investigates more with the help of the blacksmith, who's good at sketching. Goggle starts his investigation. He interrupts Ms. Greasy's funeral and interrogates her husband. The husband says that he's drinking alcohol with his daughter's boyfriend, while his daughter, Periska, was with her friends on the night of the killing. When his first wife died, he remarried Ms. Greasy without knowing that she didn't treat his daughter well. As soon as Goggle examines the alleged sign of the horseman, he suffers from seizures again and visions the crime, as he unconsciously draws a linden tree. He realizes that linden is a slang word for fabrication, indicating that the evidence is fabricated to show the horseman is the killer. First, the symbol is painted upside down. Second, the horseman only targets beautiful young women, not someone greasy. Lastly, the horseman commits a crime in the forest, not in the house. Later on, the murder weapon, red jacket, and candle are found in the husband's house. Eventually, he admits the crime, saying that he did kill his wife because he's sick and tired of her infidelity. He then pleads to attend his daughter's wedding before he's sent to jail. However, Goggle isn't convinced by the husband's confession, so he wants to conduct an autopsy. A drunk doctor with a bad reputation, nicknamed Dr. Vodka, helps Goggle in autopsying the woman's greasy body. To ease Gogol's discomfort from seeing such a fat corpse, Dr. Vodka invites him to drink vodka. Dr. Vodka concludes that Ms. Greasy didn't die of stabbing, but from a ruptured heart due to fear. Thereafter, the drunken Gogol goes to Lisa's mansion to clarify if she ever went to his hotel the night before his supposed departure, but she denies it. While they're talking, the candle suddenly loses its spark. When Lisa lights it, Gogol is reminded of the case that he needs to resolve. 
so he immediately bids goodbye to Lisa. Meanwhile, Perisco wakes up in the middle of the night because someone's calling her. When she's about to check it, the ghost of her stepmother appears and grabs her foot. Out of fear, she runs into the forest where she sees the horseman. Luckily, Gogol helps her hide behind the tree. When they are about to go home, Perisca's boyfriend arrives and thinks that she's having an affair with Gogol, so he punches him, causing him to lose consciousness. Gogol then dreams of Oksana. She explains that if he wants to find the horseman, he needs to control his supernatural power, and in order to do that, he needs to focus and forget everything that troubles his mind, especially Lisa. Gogol is disappointed when he finds out Oksana pretended to be Lisa and made love with him. He then asks her to stay away from Lisa, which angers her. It's obvious that Oksana is jealous of Lisa because she has feelings for Gogol. The next morning, Gogol wakes up with a black eye, wondering how he's able to go home. He then checks the blacksmith's drawings of the women the horseman killed. Later, his servant informs him that they found the trunk from the detective's belongings, with a note that in the event of unforeseen circumstances, the trunk should be given to him. However, they cannot open it since there's no key. Periska's wedding finally arrives. Dr. Vodka finds hallucinogens on the candle found at the crime scene. When he likes it, Gogol hallucinates and sees his greatest fear, the critic of his book. Then they conclude that when Ms. Greasy and her lover lit the candle, they hallucinate and think that the killer, who was wearing a pig mask, came out of hell to punish them for their infidelity. Ms. Greasy died of fear before she was stabbed by the killer. It's then revealed that Periska kills her stepmother, and her father just takes the blame because he doesn't want his daughter to suffer. When Gogol confronts the husband, he strangles him as Periska and her boyfriend run away into the woods. The chief of police helps Gogol escape from the husband. Then they quickly go to the woods to chase Periska. Periska doesn't notice that her boyfriend falls to the ground because the roots of the tree curl up on his feet. She escapes and rides a Tesla boat with someone whom she thinks is her boyfriend. But soon, she's terrified to figure out it isn't him, but the ghost of her stepmother. Ms. Greasy then brings her to the horseman. Gogol and his team try to help Periska, but the ghost of Ms. Greasy stops them. When Dr. Vodka lights the candle with alcohol, the Greasy ghost hallucinates and sees Gogol as an evil spirit, so she runs her greasy ass in fear. Unfortunately, they aren't able to save Periska. The horseman kills her, then leaves his iconic mark on the ground. The next day, Gogol gathers his men and asks for their help in hunting down the horseman. Unbeknownst to them, Oksana is in the old mirror, secretly listening to them. Then Gogol gets the locked trunk from the detective. Luckily, the blacksmith is able to unlock it, but when Gogol touches it, he visions that the horseman's next victim would be Lisa. The movie ends with the detective, who they thought was dead, standing at the top of the cliff. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.